Ortega is in trouble and OMG y'all, you need to give this girl a break. At some point, fans will just have to wake up to the fact that Jenna isn't a kid anymore. All right, buckle up because today's scoop is juicier than a ripe watermelon on a summer's day. So Hollywood sweetheart Jenna Ortega has graced our screens once again in her latest flick, Miller's Girl. Now, before we get into the nitty gritty, let's take a trip down memory lane. And I promise this info is important to the story. Remember those good old days of stuck in the middle when Jenna Ortega was the queen of the kids TV bringing laughter and warmth into our living rooms but hey time flies faster than Jenna's career path and she's all grown up now and little Jenna isn't so little anymore so obviously she's taking acting roles with very serious storylines and that's what her day one fans can't seem to wrap around their heads our story involves this movie Miller Girl where Jenna Ortega takes on the role of Cairo Sweet an 18 year old girl living the high life in a Tennessee mansion with parents who are busy lawyers, it's no surprise that Cairo's world is dripping with wealth and privilege. Literally, the Hollywood dream. But wait, here's where the plot thickens like a bowl of oatmeal on a cold winter morning. Ortega's character Cairo, sweet, decides to shake things up a bit and join a creative writing class. This is where she meets the other lead character, Jonathan Miller, played by the one and only super talented Martin Freeman. Hold up, hold up. Before you get too excited, let me paint you a picture of Jonathan Miller. He's a failed writer loves, he poured his heart and soul into a manuscript only to watch it crash and burn faster than a souffle in a microwave. And if that wasn't enough, Jonathan's got a lovely wife named Beatrice, portrayed by the talented Dagmara Domsnik. But let me tell you guys, Beatrice isn't exactly a ray of sunshine in Jonathan's life. Oh no. She's made it her life's mission to remind him of every single one of his shortcomings as a writer. Literally kicking a man that's already down. Naturally, Miller finds himself frustrated both professionally and as a family man and Cairo Sweet's presence only seems to amplify these feelings. Just the sight of Cairo Sweet having his book brings a glimmer of hope to the otherwise gloomy day. But when he gets home and excitedly shares the news with his new wife, Beatrice is too absorbed in her work to pay him any mind. So there's so much disconnect between Miller and his wife as she's often drunk and in her silk 90s even in the middle of the day or too busy climbing her ladder to notice the rungs Miller is stuck on. Ah, now we are getting to the heart of the matter guys. This is where things take a scandalous turn. So Cairo Sweet is given an assignment by Jonathan Miller. So here's the thing. This assignment isn't the run of the mill homework. Oh no no no. It's a recipe for temptation and desire cooked up with a dash of literary flair. You see Cairo's friend in the class Winnie has planted a seed of mischief in her mind suggesting that Jonathan Miller might just have a soft spot for our leading lady. And what does Cairo do with this tantalizing piece of information? She decides to put her writing skills to good use and provoke him in the most charming way possible through the power of words. But Cairo isn't playing it safe. Oh no. She chooses a character named Henry Miller, you know, like her teacher, Jonathan Miller, as her vessel for provocation. And let me tell y'all, the scenes she's penning are hotter than a summer day in the Sahara Desert. They're so explicit that they not only ignite flames of desire in Jonathan Miller, but also set Beatrice's heart aflutter. Initially, Jonathan Miller is so overcome with passion that he, well, let's just say he indulges in some solo activities while reading Cairo's steamy prose. But alas, all things must come to an end and Jonathan ultimately decides to pump the brakes on their little literary affair. Cairo gets super furious when she doesn't get what she wants. She's like a wildfire ready to engulf everything in her path. And so the drama unfolds, my friends, with twists and turns that'll leave you on the edge of your seat begging for more. Will Cairo get what she wants and will Jonathan and Beatrice's already rocky marriage survive the storm? Now, y'all already know I wasn't going to give you the entire spoiler, right? I'll preserve the ending's mystery for those who want to experience the movie firsthand. All right, back to Earth, here comes the heat of the matter. In the movie, physical intimacy is only explored in thought. However, as you're aware, actors must fully embody the entire scope of the film, including its behind the scenes aspects. And this is where the problem lies. Seems like not everyone is ready to let go of the past. Jenna's transition from child star to leading lady has stirred up quite a storm. Critics and fans alike are grappling with the reality that our beloved Jenna is all grown up and ready to tackle more mature roles. And so it goes without saying that after the release of this movie, it wasn't all sunshine and rainbows for our girl Jenna. Oh no, she's been facing some serious backlash after a particular scene in Miller's Girl. You know the one that got the tongues wagging and fingers pointing? Yeah, that's the scene causing all the commotion. Again, I won't spoil all the surprises, but let's just say it got people talking and not necessarily in a good way. Some fans are 
feeling a bit, let's say, betrayed by Jenna's gradual departure from her general exhibition image, but hey, isn't that what acting is all about? Stepping into different shoes and exploring new territories? But not everyone's buying it. Some are crying foul, even Jeffree Star's makeup palettes have seen less drama than this. And to make it even worse, the controversy surrounding Jenna's scene has cast a shadow over her once gleaming reputation. But hey, all publicity is good publicity, right? Or so they say. Now that we're all caught up in the whirlwind of gossip, let's address the elephant in the room, shall we? Concerns swirling around Jenna Ortega and Martin Freeman's alleged inappropriate contact during the filming of the scene in Miller's Girl. First of all, let's talk about the age gap. Jenna Ortega at the ripe age of 21, while Martin Freeman is a seasoned 52-year-old Hollywood veteran. Now, we all know that sometimes age ain't nothing but a number, but some people just can't help but raise an eyebrow at the stark contrast between the characters of these two stars. Though Jenna Ortega and Martin Freeman were merely portraying characters on screen. Things got so heated over the physical scenes between these two to the point that the actors union and the movie's production team had to step in. Both Jenna and Martin are members of the actors union and are protected by it while performing sensitive scenes. Christina Arjona, the intimacy coordinator, played a vital role in ensuring that things didn't get too steamy on set and insisted that all of the relationships on set were strictly professional with no wrongdoing involved. Of course, this should have been obvious for everyone, but for some reason, a lot of viewers insisted that there was more than meets the eye. But honestly, I don't think this is one of them. Christina told the Daily Mail both Jenna Ortega and Martin Freeman were never pressured to participate in scenes that made them uncomfortable. She emphasized that there was a whole team dedicated to ensuring that Jenna's comfort was their top priority. Would you believe that her sentiments angered some people even more? They're expressing disappointment that there were even third parties involved, and yet they let Jenna do this. Like, it's just super wild. Why are people mad at the fact that there were behind the scenes professionals working tirelessly to maintain a safe and respectable environment for all involved? So basically to most of Jenna Ortega's fans, the precautions being taken about it don't matter. They just don't want to see Jenna in such scenes. As if they own her. Christina even added that her role as an intimacy coordinator was crucial in maintaining boundaries and ensuring the comfort and safety of the actors during filming. She also emphasized that any intimate scenes were carefully choreographed and executed with the utmost professionalism, with constant communication and respect for the actor's boundaries. It seems like her insight sheds some much needed light on the situation, revealing the efforts being made behind the scenes to uphold ethical standards in the entertainment industry. In her own words, part of my job too is supporting her decisions, Jenna that is. I adapt to whatever is the comfort level of my actors, especially on a production like this where there is a large age gap between the actors, Arjona goes on to say. I'm hyper aware of both my talent and making sure that we're consistently checking in and that at no point are there any boundaries being surpassed. And again, making sure, especially with someone who's significantly younger, that they are giving continuous consent, she concluded. Though Christina's intentions may have been noble in clearing the air, it appears that she may have crossed a line by revealing these details. As an intimacy coordinator, she likely signed a non-disclosure agreement, NDA, that prohibits her from disclosing such information about her work on set. It's a sticky situation indeed, and one that could have legal effects for Christina. And so with that, the drama surrounding Miller's Girl got even more complicated. In the work of Christina's interview, SAG AFTRA has now stepped in to clarify the standards and protocols for the use of intimacy coordinators. These guides are described as crucial connections between cast and production for intimate and nudity scenes. It seems like this clarification was much needed, shedding light on the proper procedures to ensure the safety and comfort of actors in such sensitive situations. SAG AFTRA now explicitly states that confidentiality must be maintained regarding an actor's work and experience on sensitive scenes, unless the actor explicitly permits to share details. This makes it clear how important it is to respect actors' privacy and keep their experiences on set private unless they decide otherwise. Part of the statement reads, public release of details about an actor's scene work or confidences entrusted to the intimacy coordinator without the performer's consent is unacceptable. Intimacy coordinators who fail to follow this new directive will face consequences as they risk being removed from SAG-AFTRA's registry. The former SAG-AFTRA president said that the guidelines would help to normalize and encourage the use of intimacy coordinators in productions, therefore ensuring the safety and security of SAG-AFTRA members while they work. 
Would you believe that all this commotion seems to stem from a mere 12 second intimate scene? And it was public uproar, guys. Which begs the question, are people overreacting or is Miller's Girl simply not hitting the mark as a movie? Because at first people were not okay with that tiny scene, but y'all know how it goes. It was only a matter of time before the public put the entire film on a microscope and dissected it scene by scene. Suddenly, moviegoers are picking apart little things because they find the film lacking in so many other aspects. It's a debate as old as Hollywood itself, my friends. Is it the scene that's the problem or is the whole movie just not cutting it? Others felt strongly about the plot. In the age of Columbine, with, with the shadow of school shootings hanging over teachers every single day, do we really need a film whose only teacher characters of consequence are depicted as slimy and possibly predators? Teachers have given their lives to try and protect their children. They are heroes. They don't deserve this. I mean, they felt very strongly about the movie, seeing it as an attack on educational institutions, feeling the movie should have been scrubbed from existence. Well, this film has sparked intense debate and differing opinions, which in my opinion means it was a successful production, because if it can attract enough heat to provoke emotions, then it has served its purpose. Now that we've been only talking about the bad, it's only fair that I show you the good. One person says, I thought the movie was very well written. It does show where two people do cross the line as far as the teacher and student relationship. It also shows that there are no parents around for guidance of young adults. There are a lot of takeaways from this movie that can make us all think of where we are or are not for our young adults. I am very proud of Jade Bartlett. The story was a hard one to write and she nailed it. The actors were wonderful and it is a movie to see. They've not made films like this since the 90s and I've always been interested to see how it would be done with modern tastes and sensibilities. Thrilled to see this. Story of the movie is good but what people saw in the movie was the age gap of a kissing section, but this movie went in the wrong direction and got criticism for the things we see these days in Bollywood and Hollywood. Now let's shift our focus to a particular segment of the audience, those who appreciated the casting plot and trailers but felt let down by the execution. A comment read, what was this even about? Totally overhyped, almost nothing happened throughout the movie. The trailer was really good, but the movie was nothing I expected. I literally feel like I missed half the movie because literally nothing happened. And I just don't see how people can rate this five stars. Anyways, I don't recommend cuz what was this? Clearly stating their expectations weren't met. TBH, it was not worth the hype in the end. Only those TikTok edits looked good. Other than that, the plot was boring. There wasn't much exactly going on. What was the whole point is my question. The sexual tension wasn't really giving either. And to be fair, it was kind of icky, a 31 year age gap. Anyways, it was a waste of time for me showing both their general disappointment and disgust at Miller's Girl. Funny and not that 12 second scene alone has been responsible for the movie's good ratings because people literally ran to watch it not for anything but just to see what Jenna Ortega is up to so yeah the goal was achieved and let's just say Jenna Ortega delivered. Jenna Ortega is reaching that stratosphere where her name alone sells the movie more than the plot. Jenna and Florence Pugh are currently the only new generation movie stars that I can think of who can do that. Anyways the bottom line is that the movie Miller's Girl has taken us on an emotional roller coaster with Jenna Ortega and Martin Freeman delivering electrifying performances, this film delved into controversial themes and twisted plots. While critics share their thoughts, it was the audience's reaction that truly counted. Miller's Girls sparked debates, lit up passions, and reminded us of the magic of storytelling, even in ordinary ways. Whether you're feeling satisfied or disappointed, one thing's for sure, the drama never stops in Hollywood. I'd love to hear your opinions on this, loves. Also, thanks for watching, and stay tuned for more sizzling pop culture drama. Bye!